Hi everyone, welcome. The bin that you see right here is my oldest system. It's in its rightful place because my oldest stuff is on the top and the youngest stuff is on the bottom. This thing has been in service for now 201 days. And I was really tempted on day 200 yesterday to come down here and check on it. It was actually yesterday, seven days in progress that we've been attempting to migrate the worms out of the finished compost that's on the far side over there into this section that's covered with plastic where we added food eight days ago and yesterday it would have been a nice round number seven days in progress horizontal migration so I just tried to uh, break away from that feeling like I had to go with the nice round numbers and I forced myself to wait one extra day <laughs> so that today on day 201 we're gonna check in on this horizontal migration I wouldn't expect for it to be done not by a long shot but I just wanted to make sure that it's well stocked, so I bought some food down here. And the food is over here on the table amidst all this other mess. The stuff I was going to give them is um, a variety of delicious cantaloupe, pumpkin, and a banana peel. Yeah, all this stuff that's out here, I got my blender out yesterday, so I started taking all this stuff like buckwheat, steel cut oats, sunflower seeds, no, these are the sunflower seeds. These are pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds ground up really nice. The sunflower seeds have little splinters in them. All the other stuff looks really nice. I've been wanting to try into this whole worm chow experiment. These crackers here are all good ingredients, but it's also got salt, so that's a no-no. But I'm going to make some room, get all this uh, experimental junk out of the way, and we're going to see how the uh, migration's doing. Give it some more food. Keep our fingers crossed for a speedy completion. All right, let's get to work. When we set this up, we originally thought about removing this plastic and replacing it with something a little smaller that would fit in here a little bit better, but I guess we never got around to doing that. The coverings over here are paper to intentionally let the material begin drying a little bit and then hopefully become something that the worms might evacuate um, due to its drying rather than being lured by the delicious foods over on the other side so it's kind of a combination one-two strategy so I would think that after this much time these castings should pretty easily shake off this bubble wrap and I guess we could just keep using it if it's been working well we'll decide how well it worked once we get into the feeding area see how things are progressing Try and get these bits of bedding back in place. So I guess, you know, we could probably just go with what's in there already as far as bedding is concerned and drop in the extra food. If we need more bedding, we can always grab some and replenish. So I want to really just see how this material is coming along as far as evacuation is concerned. And I suppose at the same time, by giving it a good upturn, we can help it air out a little bit and possibly dry off. Looks like right away at the very bottom I could feel a fair bit of moisture down here. And possibly for that reason we're finding a whole bunch of worms just hanging out over here, enjoying it. Alright, so these um these are actually what I consider to be my original population of worms. A population that I started out with just a maybe a couple dozen tops. When this um, population was still in its infancy, or at, at its very beginning in its worm bin, we would occasionally come in and see how they're doing and go on sort of a little bit of a, a search for worms within the material to see how many we could find, just to size up how our population was doing in terms of numbers. And we, I don't know, my spreadsheet, it's recorded as less than a, a couple dozen. I think it's 23. <laughs> 23 worms was what we were able to collect up and count and, you know, say for certain are the number of worms that are in the bin. Possibly a few more than that. Probably not many more than that. I can't remember exactly how we arrived at that number. It was a, a um, it was just a kind of everyone's thoughts kicked in together. Everyone's estimates averaged to come up with a, an average value, which is the estimated number of worms that we started with here but I'll tell you after a couple hundred days they've really done a great job bouncing back from near 
complete wipeout. All right, so like right over here on the very edge, the material is awfully damp, probably getting its moisture from the other side. Well, no, probably had its moisture, but hasn't been able to release it because of its proximity to the feeding area. So that was the whole idea of the plastic remaining over the feeding area to let that material on that side of the little divider wall remain nice and damp. While the material out here on this side is permitted to dry a little bit to potentially get the worms searching around for a little bit more uh, hospitable space to be, although this stuff feels quite hospitable right now just the way it is. <laughs> so I'm not sure we've really um, built up the incentive quite yet for the worms to skedaddle out of this stuff, but I think if we just keep checking in and keep aerating the material and leaving it covered relatively loosely with only paper, it should get, continue to dry out gradually and hopefully get the remaining worms um, moving, looking for a better place to be. And there's probably still a good amount of leftovers foods in here too, so I'm just re-excavating here because I did want to, you know, give myself plenty of room to examine the feeding zone. And then, you know, sometimes we even increase the the overall size of the feeding zone when we come in here to feed. But I'm just peeking down low and I can see a good amount of castings down low. Let's see here. I'm not quite sure what to expect. I guess it doesn't matter too much if we agitate things up a little bit here. We had propped everything up on these cylindrical cardboard tubes. Some of them look like they've torn open and collapsed, but this one's still holding up. I thought they would have all collapsed by now and kind of sent this entire little contraption um, into sort of a settling mode, but it does seem like it has maintained its depth pretty good. I guess we're going to fluff it up here a little bit and reuse what we can. I can see here some leftovers of the foods that we had placed in here previously to try to lure the worms over. This is the rind of a cantaloupe. And the, uh, the actual fleshy part of the cantaloupe melon appears to still be holding up in small amounts right there on the rind. And you can see a good amount of worms have made their way over here. I believe some of this stuff might be coffee too. I doubt that it's castings. They bear a resemblance to each other. Here's an entire banana peel. I mean, some people might argue that there's really no need to increase the uh, the food supply in this migration zone. I I've always found it to work well, so I'm going to stick to it. Because, I mean, if this stuff um, hasn't been depleted yet, it's probably only because we had just created this feeding zone eight days ago. The worms had to kind of discover it and wander over into it and get situated, start feeding. And it's still only the, the few worms that actually did make it over here so far. So there's still a good amount of worms that are still going to keep coming over. Oh man, there's a nice big, fat, juicy uh, cocoon sitting right there on the surface. And um, I just couldn't resist picking it up, checking it out. I can see another one right in there, too. So that's, um, that's always a good sign. I guess I must have dropped it. Should we try to see if we can scoop out the other one? Here's the other one. I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Just kind of a cool thing to spot cocoons right there in the um, finished castings. So let's see, I guess I like the idea of using this sort of bedding when I'm setting up one of these feeding zones, especially if I know that in the near future I'm going to want to see if I can try to recycle some of this stuff and reuse it. Since some of the, um, no, I guess all of it, since all of the food that we're using to replenish with today is frozen, my preference would be to you know, clear out the space onto which I'm going to drop these fresh materials. So if we can evacuate some of this bedding that we're going to recycle, get the worms out of it, then I could do it with a clear conscience and just drop the stuff right in. I guess we could always replenish and add to the bedding too. Uh, this was a whole banana. I imagine this as being a real popular item. And I don't know if I've just scared the worms away from it or they're still just not taking a shine to it quite yet. So yeah, there's there's a good bit of um, leftovers in here still. But you know what? 
That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to give them more. I'd rather leave all the leftover foods in this kind of mix at this point. This combination of bedding and foods and leftovers and whatnot. And worms, obviously. And I'd like to uh, sort of establish this as fresh. And they'll just keep coming over to it, I believe. Here's another piece of large bedding. We can easily shake off the inhabitants and recycle easily. I don't remember. There was a few cardboard tubes. There was clearly that coffee filter. Okay, I don't, I don't think we have to go too nuts trying to recycle everything. We can... Uh, we can supplement. We can just grab a little bit of fresh bedding to toss into here. I've been wanting to give this stuff a try. This is the paper that the toilet paper is wrapped inside of each individual roll of toilet paper is individually wrapped and the paper feels very like flimsy, very thin, but it also has kind of like this shiny, almost not shiny, but almost like a waxy feel to it. So I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to just start grinding it up into my pre-made bedding collection and have my, you know, my bedding littered with stuff that's for whatever reason not going to break down. But here if we keep them whole, we can draw a lot of worm activity to them and then monitor their progress in a place where they're probably going to get about as much attention as you can want for a test like this. And if it's good, then I can include that stuff in my bedding, shred it up, but I, I wanted to know first if um, if I can count on the worms breaking the stuff down, or is there something with that stuff that's going to slow it down or cause issues? I'm sure it'll be fine, but I just um, it just has this weird feel to it that made me think that it would be a good idea to see some positive ev evidence that it's something the worms can break down, and then I'll feel more comfortable starting to integrate it into my prepared bedding and stuff. It's kind of my same thinking with all those experimental um, pulverized grains and seeds. I wasn't sure if they're all going to fly as far as worm food. There again, I'm fairly confident that they're going to be fine. But I just wanted to make sure, you know. So I wanted to do little tests with that stuff to see what they like, what they don't like, and then probably just end up using it all anyway mixed together. <laughs> but still, right now, while they're all separate, I can try that. So I'm going to grab another piece of paper to toss on there. Here we go. I got a few of these laying around. I've been putting them aside, not knowing for sure if I wanted to include them with my collection of stuff that I'm going to send through the shredder next time I'm creating bedding. So this will be a pretty good uh, test. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe it's too soon to tell in a week from now if we come back in here eight or ten days or seven days or whenever we check back in here. Um, but hopefully it'll start making some good progress and I can count on it as a good bedding to use. So here's a few more pieces of cardboard. Another chunk of that banana, probably the same stuff. So these worms look good. They look really nice and rich and dark in color. I think that means they're healthy as far as their diet's concerned. They're pretty plump. There's a variety of little ones mixed in here too. So it's it's pretty much what, I, what you want to see, I think. Um, I guess the only thing missing is the entire population of the um, <laughs> bin being over here so that we can start thinking of relocating them into a new home which I don't even have yet and that's the other thing I'm, I am prepared to let this go for a little while since I'm not really equipped with a, a new home to place them into I just saw another cocoon against this dark material they stand out so clearly <laughs> Because especially when they're like a new cocoon, still kind of light in color, it just stands out really clearly, contrasty up against the uh, the black castings. So I'm doing my best to, you know, level this off in such a way that I'm not tamping it down or squashing it together. I want it to remain kind of chunky with air gaps in between. So I don't know, I just couldn't resist grabbing this cocoon over here because it's a little different from the ones we checked out earlier. It's so much darker in color. It's one that's probably a little further along, closer to uh, expelling its contents, letting the babies out. So I figured I would just throw it over where we want to have all the worms lining up anyway. 
So I don't know, eight days, seems like it's working. It's starting to uh, collect up a nice population of worms. We've just increased its overall size a little bit. You know, but having banana peels and all this stuff out here on top, I still feel like I want to cover up with yet another something over here. I believe we'll just use up a little bit of my uh, remaining pre-made bedding material here, the shredded stuff. Obviously this is stuff you can't just shake the worms off of when you want to recycle it. It's just going to blend in. But I think it's just the right stuff here to give us pretty good coverage over the, the tempting delicious food items that are sitting out here on the surface. Try to prevent, you know, insects from wanting to check it out. So, I mean, I think we're just going to stick to using the same plastic coverings. I was able to shake off some of the castings that were adhering to it um, and yeah we'll just we'll just use it as is why don't we uh, return this paper covering which it uh, seems to be doing a good job you know I think gradually letting the, the stuff dry it's going to produce some pretty nice castings and it'll uh, you know kind of gradually get the worms hopefully moving out of it as it dries but you know it does have a fair bit of moisture content to it I don't know if it came through on the video but you might have been able to tell just from me handling how it was certainly not flowing so it'll take some time before it gets to that point and at that point the worms will definitely be looking for a more hospitable more damp material to be in and who knows by that time we might have come in here for a, yet another replenishment of the food I always like checking in on these making sure that the foods plentiful possibly even increasing the size of the migration area and um, eventually we'll end up with some depopulated material over here. And, you know, let, letting it draw out over time might not be a mistake either because you saw cocoons giving those little guys a little chance to hatch out and move over as well might be a, a possible thing to consider too. But that would definitely increase the time frame for sure. So whatever, we'll decide um, in the future what to do. So I've got a couple things I need to put away and clean up over here, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. That stuff's boring. Before I go, though, really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. Oh, yeah, there's also channel memberships if you're interested in supporting the channel. That's another way you can go about doing it. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.